How's everyone doing today? Some of you are already experiencing a, a storm or a, a sifting already. And some of the things that we're experiencing, we're not even realizing it's happening because it is so subtle. It is so subtle and we don't even, we don't even um, uh, uh, sometimes understand it. I shared this before, it's not part of my message, but I want to share with you. I remember years ago when my mom would, um, uh, I was the youngest of 11 and I had seven sisters and three older brothers. And at one time, uh, six of the sisters lived in the house where I lived. And my mom, my mom and my, especially my dad, he believed that the man is to be taken care of. The man is to be taken care of. And so my sisters were ordered to take care of the two brothers, me and my, my older brother, one year older. They took care of us like kings almost. Literally, they would feed us breakfast in bed. They would, they would make fresh tortillas. They would, literally, they would take my... They would take my pants and they would either put them in the dryer or warm them up over the, over the comal, over the stove, and they would put them on me while I'd be in bed. They would put kule or milk on the side for me. They would take, they would, that's the way my sisters were ready to take care of the man. And, and <laughs> when I wasn't home no more, I started going into convulsions, brother. <laughs> I started going to withdrawals, brother. What's up with this? Pearl, you better act right. You see, but I'm saying not to say this, is I remember, I remember in the, in the early morning, sometimes I could, when my mom was making food for us to give us in bed, I could smell the tortillas. I could smell the homemade tortillas, boy. And sometimes I would come down, and in the preparation of making tortillas, she was taking, um, I guess it's called a sifter. It's an old stainless steel looking thing, and she would, yeah, some of them she would go, it was around, go like this, and there was other ones she would go like that, a little piece of metal would just kind of go, a blade would just kind of, sift it like that and all the junk was left inside and the powder in the bottom was very fine yeah it was very fine and the Lord reminded me that of right now he says that's what the enemy wants to do he wants to separate you from God's presence he said tell the men that he'd be very 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 careful and one of the ways that he's doing it we, we talked a few weeks ago about bitterness and the other one the Lord gave me today was loyalty Loyalty, because loyalty is so vital and it is so important in the lives of a man of God. To be loyal to the things that God has given us, amen, in everything. Not just, not just, not say like, not just holy things, not just church ministry stuff, not just, not just family, but in everything, loyal in everything. You heard me talk about Babe Ruth in times past, but I just want to share a little bit about him in another little story. We know that Babe Ruth had the, his, his bat had the power of a cannon. That boy can swing and he can swing hard. Babe Ruth, had the, his bat had the power of a cannon. The record, 700, 714 home runs that remained unbroken until Hank Aaron came along. But age took its toll. Age took its toll. Finally, the Yankees traded him to the Braves. In the last game in Cincinnati, he struck out and literally made several misplays that allowed the Reds to score five runs in one inning. Literally. And so what happened, as, as, as Babe Ruth was walking out and, and he was discouraged and, and he was walking to the dugout with his head down, his chin down, he felt dejected, there rose an enormous, like a storm, a roar amongst all the people that were there and they began to come against him when in times past they were his hero. Even maybe the, the month before, the week before, the day before, they were his, he was their hero and now they, were, they started jeering at him, they started putting their fists at him and... And, and history says that back in the day, said they, I read it, said it was catcalling. They began to say ugly things to him. And out of all that mess, as all the people were coming against him and booing him, it says a miraculous thing happened. It says that a little boy, as he was going back to the dugout with his head down and, and it said dejected that way, a little boy came out of the, out of the, out of the stands and he jumped over the little, little area and he came down to where, where Babe Ruth was. And the little boy came and he grabbed his thighs and he just began to, uh, to hold Babe Ruth and he... It says the little boy cried, and then it says Babe Ruth just grabbed him, and they walked out of the field together. Look what the scripture says in Mark 10, 15. He says, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, like a little child, will never enter in. You see, so many times loyalty 
goes out the window just because we're uncomfortable for the moment. You could have a dope fiend mama, and that little child will still want to be with her day and night. I've seen it personally, a dope fiend mama and that mama, that little baby will still want to be with no matter, it don't matter if she's sleeping in the car, if that baby's sleeping in the car and all he's eating, eating fries all day, that, that, that little child will want to stay with mama. The loyalty, the loyalty of that child to the mama. Have you ever had someone burn you that you literally did not think they would ever burn you? You expected it from people, but those that you've trusted all of a sudden burn you and how that feels from somebody you would have never, ever thought would burn you and then burned you. In the dictionary, I want to share with you this. The word loyal means unswerving in the legions of these areas. I'm just going to read them briefly. So the, 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 the dictionary defined loyalty in these unswerving in the legions in this area, like in the government, in one's government. In other words, backing up the government. I don't know if I back, back them up now. I pray for them. I don't know if I support them right now. It may be to, loyalty to a private person, an individual, maybe mom or dad or somebody like that, or maybe a a military comrade that you were in the foxholes with, a military comrade that you went to battle with, and they became your comrades and friends for like family for life that way, amen? Then maybe a loyalty to a cause or an ideal or a custom, or loyalty to your spouse. Hear that? Hear that all of a sudden? Yeah. Loyalty to your spouse. Oh, but Pastor Rudy, I'm not bumping nothing else on the side. But just because you're not doing that doesn't mean you're not being unloyal to your wife. Oh, I'm not doing it. But yet we're unloyal in so many different ways to our spouse. If you don't feel you're unloyal with those small things that you think are insignificant, then tell your wife. See what she thinks about that. If that's loyalty or not. Let's see what she thinks. Tell your children, tell your kids, tell your teenagers and see what they think about that. How about loyalty to your job? Oh, no, I've been there 15 years, but I'm leaving because that guy offered me another dollar. Are you loyal to your job and to your employee or are you burning them? Are you stealing material? Are you stealing the time, the hours? Are you loyal to them? So once again, it's not just, oh, yeah, I've been working a lot, but are you loyal when nobody's watching. You see where I'm going? Loyal to your, you said, hear me say, your sports team. This is good, nothing wrong with that. And to all the hobbies and on all the paraphernalia, have everything. We can't, find, can't even find a Bible in the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it. I've been to those houses. Oh, yeah, involved in ministries, serving the Lord. And I'll deliberately say, where's your Bible, bro? Oh, hold on. You know, 45 seconds, 50 seconds later they come out and they're wiping the top of the Bible going. Thinking I didn't see nothing. I go, bro, what's all that on your shirt, bro? Yeah. Didn't think I'd seen all that dust come off the Bible and land on your shirt. How about loyalty in all reality to the Lord and what, what God and who he is, period? Not what he's done for you, but loyal to, the, to the, who, who God is because of who he is, not for what, he's, what you anticipate he's going to do for you. How about loyal to your church? Some folks get mad for any reason. They're gone. I'm out of here. Yeah, they got me mad. Yeah, they, 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 they told me I couldn't sit in that chair. They just, uh, I came 45 minutes late. They didn't let my kid come to class. Well, you, deserve, you don't deserve to go to class if you're bringing 45 minutes late. No disrespect, but I believe there needs to be order in the house of God. I don't like to cater. No disrespect. The scripture is very clear. It talks about those that are sinners. It says those that don't know the, 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 the truth, those that are blinded, love them, encourage them, bless them, be patient with them, and, 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 and help them. Offer, offer words of, of, of life and, and bless them that way. But it says that the brother, you heard me say before, the brother that proclaims to be a Christian and he starts acting sideways, it doesn't say, oh, go buy him lunch, hook him up, do this. It says rebuke him sternly. I believe there needs to be order. There needs to be order. So many people are okay with just abandoning their body, abandoning the, don't get me wrong, if God has called you somewhere else, that's awesome. 
But you've got to go through the right process, get a release from that pastor. You've got to go through the right process. Don't be abandoning where God has called you just because somebody got you mad. Otherwise, there's no loyalty. And I guarantee you, if you can't be loyal to the things of God, I guarantee you, you're not being loyal to your wife. I guarantee you. Stay with me. You know, one of the difficult things for, like me or any pastor, is when the people aren't loyal to the pastor. So, I'm not, we're not talk, like, like me, you, you know me. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe I need to be served. I don't believe the leaders need to be served. Christ didn't come to be served. Christ didn't need, he, 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 he says, I came to serve. I'm just going to be straight. I'm going I'm to share my pet peeve a little bit. So many pastors think that they need to be served by everybody else. They don't, that's not right. I don't, I mean, that's, that's, no, don't give me There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to bless your pastor, there's nothing wrong with that. But I believe the pastor has, should be the first example in serving. I believe the pastor needs to be the first example, you know, to serve, to bless people, to do what God has called you to do. How can we be asking somebody else to do that if we don't do it? Yeah. Don't do as I do. Just do as I tell you. Yeah. We need to be the first example. How about loyalty to prayer? Oh, but I prayed for about three minutes, you know. Or I prayed last Saturday at about noon. Do you have your time in loyalty in prayer? Shoot, we're real loyal. You know what we're loyal to? That remote. Shoot. And if the remote don't work, we're on that phone. It don't matter if the electricity goes out in the house, no TV. Boom. I don't need no television. Bam. Yeah. And literally hours. Some of these brothers, 35, 40, 50 years old, and still playing eight hours on video games. I'm telling you, something's wrong with that picture. If you can spend eight hours, four hours in a video game, and you can't spend 45 minutes reading the Word of God and an hour in prayer, something's wrong with that picture. You better test that spirit that's inside of you because I guarantee you that's not the spirit of Christ. We better test that spirit. Oh, I can't believe he's saying that. You don't like it? Get out. I'm going to speak what God has called me to speak. Regardless, I love you, brothers, but I'm not trying to be your buddy. I want to tell you what God has called me to speak. How about loyalty to your brothers in Christ instead of causing chaos and talking trash on them? Oh, how you doing, brother? I love you. You're a blessing. You know, you're, and as soon as you get home, that dude's an idiot, man. I can't stand this vato. <laughs> talking to your wife in front of your kids, saying, that brother, that sister, that family's tore up. I can't believe that. You know what? They're... But the big old mosque that I ride in church amongst the brethren, you were real nice and loving and kind and understanding and patient and everybody else. Yeah. But they were talking trash behind their back. I've told you this before and I'll tell you again. I got no problem in telling you. My wife and I have made a vow. We don't do that. Because the, the, the two places where people talk trash the most, especially amongst family and couples, is in the car when they're driving and at home at the dinner table. We've made a vow not to do that. We're not going to trash people. We're not going to come against our leadership. We might talk about direction we need to go because, don't get me wrong, I don't agree with everybody. But I'm not going to say, you know what, I can't believe that punk or that pastor's an idiot because you know, I'm not going to do that. We made a vow not to talk trash that way, not to come against people of God. Because let me tell you like this, just what if that person you're talking trash about, you don't agree with what they're doing because, because maybe you, didn't, you weren't raised that way or you don't feel God would use them that way. Just say that God is using them in a mighty way and you just came against them. Just what if God has chosen to use them that way and you're coming against what they're saying? You better watch out because that sifting is going to be crazy and not just against you but against your spouse and your children and your grandchildren to come. Be very careful. It's better not to say nothing if you can't say something positive. It's better not to speak if you can't speak life. Keep your mouth shut. You know, think twice before you speak one time. Don't say nothing about nobody, even if it's true. Oh, brothers, let's pray right now because that brother, he's tore up, man. He's still drinking. He's still using. And you know what? His wife had an affair with somebody else, and we need to pray for him right now in the name of Jesus. Sock that brother up. Yeah. Oh, but we're, we're, we're going before the Lord in prayer. 
don't know who you're praying to with that. I don't know who you're praying to. Stay with me. So once again, synonymous words for, for, for loyalty is faithful, allegiance, devotion, dedication, constant, unwavering, steady, and unfailing. So loyalty and reality should not be given based uh, to the person or the agency or the, the, build, the brick and mortar, the church or whatever, because they deserve it. It's not based on whether they deserve it or not. Some of you have an employer that you hate. <laughs> yeah, but you still got to be loyal. Some of you are going through something right now with your wife and you don't even like your wife right now. Yeah. Some of you are not in love anymore. And you're having a difficult time. Oh, I don't love her no more. I don't got to be loyal then. <laughs> uh, so, uh, before I made a, 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 a vow with her, I made a covenant with God first. So if I'm not loyal to her, I'm being unfaithful to him. So what she does or doesn't do, how she lives her life does not dictate my, my loyalty to the Father. Amen. Nothing you or anybody does dictates my loyalty to the Father. Somebody gets you real mad, I, ooh, when it costs, I'm not going to do that. I want a sock, brother. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be very careful in loyalty to my God. Are you with me? So many times loyalty is something that we very quickly and just nonchalantly want to throw it out the window. Just, I don't care about me. I don't care. I don't care about keeping my word. I said I was going to do that, but I'm not going to do that. We need to be very careful with that. So the Lord says I'm, that the enemy wants to sift you, and that's one of the ways, like I talked about a few weeks ago, as I said, through bitterness, for, you know, by not forgiving and by, by just holding the grudges that way, becomes, uh, it turns into anger. And then because of lack of loyalty, the lack of loyalty in what God has placed around you. Are you loyal to your kids? Are you keeping your word of what you say you're going to do? You better keep your word in everything that you say you're going to do. So let's see what the Bible says, what the Bible has to say about loyalty and, and being loyal. So the first one, as I said, loyal, loyalty is unwavering in good times and bad. Proverbs 17, 17 says this, A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. In other words, saying, you brothers and me, when somebody's going through problems, you need to stand with them. Not cut them loose and say, you're on your own, brother. <laughs> you need to come alongside that brother and help them. In other words, go through adversity with them. Help them. If it's, sometimes it's an encouraging word. Time is spent with them, just blessing them. You need to come alongside their word. I'll read it again. A, friend's love at, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Loyalty is what you do, not what you say. Matthew 26, 33, 35, I'm reading this. Peter replied, even if all fall away on the count of you, I will never. I tell you the truth. And Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same you know what Peter did right after that? So to me, Peter was talking trash. Oh, Lord, I'll never do that. As soon as he was, he was with the rest of the centurions by the campfire, I don't know this dude. I ain't never seen that Jesus man. And you know what Scripture says? It says that, that Peter even cursed. I don't know if there was F-bombs out there. <laughs> but it says he cursed to prove that he didn't know Jesus. When just a minute before he said, I'll die for you, Lord. His words sounded real good and sounded real convincing to the hearer, to the people around you. But his actions were totally different. So it's not, loyalty is not what you, you it's, not, it's, not, it, it's what you do, it's not what you say. Loyalty, three, is in your heart. It is willing and is not reluctant. Psalm 78, 8 says this. They would not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation whose hearts were not loyal to God, whose spirits were not faithful to him. In other words, they indeed, they professed relation with him, but did not set their hearts with him. They were not cordial in reality in, in, in their engagements to God, nor inward in worship with him. 
They were real quick amongst the brethren to speak that way, and everybody's seen it like that, but on the inside, they didn't have the heart for Christ. Loyalty can be very demanding. Stay with me. Exodus 17, 8 through, 8, 8 through 13 says this. The Amalekites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, watch this, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses, watch this, Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the mountain. Those three went to the mountains while, while Joshua had to fight with his, 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 his boys that way. Verse 11, as long as Moses held his hands the Israelites were winning. As long as he held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. Verse 12, when Moses' hands grew tired, they took, a, they, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other, so that the hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekites' army with the sword. In other words, the loyalty also determines where you are placed. You are determined while you are placed. Because Joshua could have said, why do I got to be fighting? Why do I got to be, why, do, why is Aaron and her, go to, go, go, all they're doing is holding Moses' hand. While we're over here fighting, and why do they get to do that? You see, Lord wants to see your loyalty in where he places you now. If he's calling you to, to, to clean toilets or to, to vacuum in here or do something different on the streets helping people, he wants your loyalty in what he's called you right then and there. Be very careful that you don't, that you don't begin to experience that sifting that's going to take place that the enemy wants to do. Be loyal and, whatever, and don't kick and buck whatever God has for you. Even if you don't like it, don't kick and bug. Just say, praise the Lord, even if you do. Uh, praise the Lord, amen. Just do what you got to do and be loyal to what God has called you to do. And if you can, love it and enjoy it because it's for his glory, it's for his kingdom. All this, like, it, it, it literally takes 32 men to make, 32 people to make this happen on Tuesdays. From the kitchen to the, the, the musicians to all the, these guys, the workers, the volunteers, security, 30, 32 men to make it happen, men and women to make it happen. So I'm going to tell you like this, I don't cook nothing. <laughs> I don't cook nothing. I don't, I don't touch the offering. I don't count the offering. I don't do the worship. I'm not here with their practices, Gerald and his team. I don't do any of that. I talk with the folks and I curves and I come to preach what God has called me to preach. But everybody coming, but just what if? Pearl and the whole team said, ah, I'm done. I ain't cooking no more. Half of you brothers wouldn't even come. They ain't serving no more. I ain't coming. Let's see what the loyalty is like. We should just do a test, huh? Some of you are already fidgeting on me. Let's just do a test maybe and see who's going to be loyal. I know who won't like it is your spouse at home. <laughs> My husband's coming home hungry on Tuesday nights, Pastor Rudy. What's up with that? So loyalty in reality, it can, be, it can be demanding. It can be very, very demanding based on especially where he has you because you might not agree with what everyone else is doing around you and you're doing this and you've got to be loyal to that and what seems like what they're doing is so easy. Like in, in Numbers 7, 9 with the Kohites when they were in the desert and God had called them to move in the desert because they were wandering for 40 years and, and when God had had called them to, they, to, to, to have the tent of meetings and where the Holy of Holies was where, because they didn't have a temple yet, so they would move everything around and, and, and different, uh, the different tribes had to carry different things. And the scripture tells us there in Numbers that, that one, of the, one of the wealthy people had blessed the priests and, and blessed, blessed the Israelites that way and said, I'm giving you, I, the homie told me he gave them so many carts and gave them so many oxen and said, so you guys can pull the load because you're, you're wandering, you're in the desert, and you can put all the things from the temple in this, and you can be on the cards, and you can be, the oxen can take it for you. 
So the people were doing that. They loaded up those, the brand new carts with brand new big old corn-fed oxen, and they were loading all the, the stuff on it for the tent of meetings. But then God told Moses, tell Aaron, tell the, tell the Kohites, he said, tell them. In reality, even though everybody's got a cart, everybody's got an oxen, and, and they're carrying all the stuff, he goes, the stuff they got to carry, I'm not going to give them an oxen. I want them to carry that on their shoulders. He said, I'm not going to give them any oxen. He said, because those are the holy things of God, and I want to trust you with the holy things, so I can't have you putting those things on a cart. So just paint this picture. Just imagine. It's not in my note, but I'm going to share with you. Just imagine as God is, 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 is calling us to carry those holy things on our back, and we feel like we're doing all the work, and we feel like everybody else is passing by because the Scripture says that the other Kohites, it says they, they were passing by with all their loads on them, and they were probably, I'm just, I'm just paraphrasing, the scripture doesn't say this, but I'm just picturing that they were passing by, sitting on the, on the, on the, on the big old the cart, and maybe drinking lemonade, and the umbrella, and just riding in the back of the cart of the oxen, while the coal heights were walking with all the burden on their shoulders, they were walking in the same desert, and God says, I can't. You see, sometimes we have it backwards. We think, oh, I'm a man of God, and God's going to bless me. And he's going to make it so much easier for me because of my position and my status and my calling. And God says, no, because I'm trusting you with the holy things. I can't, ha- I can't give you the carts. I need you to carry that on your shoulders. And, you know, sometimes that seems like it's a burden, but it's a blessing. God says, what we think is a burden, well, I've got to pray more often because he's given me great, great revelations and, and he's, he's given me great responsibilities, so I need to fast more. I need to seek God more. I need, I need to, so the, the burden seems greater. And all of a sudden, people that are tore up are coming to you and cussing you out and coming against you. And these demons are trying to jump at you. And people are trying to do this and do that. Like, Lord, but as a man of God, it should be easier. The Lord says, I'm trusting you with the holy things. Don't base what I am and who I am in you and what I've called you to do and what everybody else is doing. I've called, to carry, I've called for you to carry the holy things upon your shoulders. The Lord says, get ready for the sifting. Get ready for the sifting. Loyalty will involve sacrifice. Matthew 16, 24 says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself. That right there is a big thing. He must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, when it says deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, those are all big issues. But the one that really stands out for me the most is the second one where he says that, it says, take up his cross and follow me. For Jesus, in reality, to say this to the disciples was huge, and in reality, it was unthinkable. It was. It was unthinkable. See, we don't see it that way now because we don't have any crosses around us except the ones you got around your neck. So crosses to us, in reality, we know what they represent, but they're not, a, they're not I say like respectfully, they're not a real big deal to us. But what, 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 what it was back in those days, it was unthinkable for, for Jesus to make that kind of statement because the cross was a huge, huge symbol of great suffering and shame that the Romans used to humiliate their subjects. You see, the cross represented the most painful death hanging on those three nails from six to, three, to 30 hours until they, until they could no longer breathe through suffocation. So the cross represented crazy suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of anguish, and in many times they were naked except for just something they would cover here, so they were naked in front of all the people. So the cross represented something real crazy. So when Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me, they're like, did you hear what he just said? Did you hear what he just said? So when Jesus told them to take up their cross, in reality, he was giving them the ultimate challenge. If you're going to follow me, you're going to have to take up the cross. You're going to have to carry that burden. But I've said this before too, did you, did, but do you know that even though with your cross that you're carrying, it could be a lot of stuff. It could be a lot of issues that we're going through and just doing our best to serve God. and It's, it's, it's costing us. In the midst of that, the Lord will call you to help carry somebody else's cross. Another brother or a sister or family. Yeah. Literally, when Jesus was on the, on the Villa de Rosa, 
it says that, that the burden, it doesn't say the burden was great, but it just says that he, the, the, he dropped the cross. Bam! Yeah, it says he dropped the cross on his way to get crucified. He, they were making him carry his own cross after all the beatings. And it says he dropped the cross, and Simeon was coming in reality. The, the scripture says he was coming from a marketplace. And it says Simeon was passing by, and they told him, pick it up, pick up his cross and carry it for him. Jesus, in reality, had somebody else's day and their schedule interrupted to, car to carry his cross. So somebody else's time was interrupted to carry somebody else's cross. You see, but we get so worried with the cross, the burden that we're carrying, that we feel we can't carry anybody's cross. You heard me say it before, we're not given a pass. As men of God, people, we're not given a pass. We're not exalved of, of God's will in our life. We have to be able to do that. So he carried Jesus' cross to the skull of Golgotha to be crucified for Jesus. See, sometimes the Lord will ask you to carry somebody else's cross. So once again, if we're not careful and we don't have that discernment to understand that, you will begin to see the sifting. We will begin to see the sifting. Amen? Loyalty to the Lord will be rewarded. Psalms 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a shield, is a, is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good things does he withhold from those who walk, whose walk is blameless. When this psalm says that whose walk is blameless, what it's doing, it's referring to Genesis 17, 1. When the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, walk with me and be blameless. Meaning, Abraham would receive the blessings and the promises of the Lord if he was faithful and obedient. Because remember, Moses was offered promises. He didn't get to go in the promised land. Because of the process of the journey, he made some wrong decisions. Amen? See, many want the Lord to bless them and to give them favor in the midst of their disobedience. Yeah. Talking to a brother today. And I've been trying to get a hold of this boy. This, I've been, you know, he just in the back stood in position. I've been trying to get a hold of him. And I know he hurt because his, his mom told me, yeah, he, he got your message, but he wasn't calling me. He went, nothing, 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 nothing. For months, I'm trying to get a hold of him. And then all of a sudden, he called me today. Hey, uh, I need a ride. I'm like, bro, all these times I've been trying to call you, and all of a sudden you call me, you want to ride. You never call me to say, hey, what's up? I'm praying with you. How's it going? You want to ride. That's, I mean, nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying, you got to be real careful. We want God to bless us in our disobedience. We want God's hand to move in our life when we don't want to move in what God has called us to do. Seven, disloyalty will be punished. Joshua 7, 1. It says, but the Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Camri, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. Uh, so the Lord's anger burned against him. In other words, talking when they were going to battle, and the Lord told them, when you go into battle, do not keep anything, destroy everything, kill the people and all that, all, the, all these other things, you're, the, 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 the riches and all that stuff, you need to save it uh, for the temple. Because remember, they were still in the desert. Save it for the temple and all that. And, and Achan uh, didn't do that. Everybody else is okay, but Achan, it says that in the, battle, in the midst of, of, of destroying everybody, uh, he's seen the Babylonian robe, uh, slivers of silver and gold, and he took it. You heard me say that before. I preached on it many times before. It says he took it, and he took it because he didn't have a home yet. They were still wandering in the desert. He says he took it to his tent, and it says he put it under his tent. In other words, God had given us specific, specific instructions, and when it came down to it, the desire for the silver and the gold and the Babylonian robe, he couldn't resist it, so he took it, he stole it, and he hid it. And long story short, because of that, he was picked out. He, 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 he couldn't hide it. And the Lord ended up destroying him, his wife, and all his kids, and all his possessions, and all his animals. And it says after they were, killed, after they were stoned, he burned them because of disloyalty. I'm not saying God's going to do that to you, but I'm giving the ultimate what the Scripture says that has happened in times past. So when the Scripture places this in these contexts of, of scripture this way he's do, the scripture it's, it's the lord's done that for a reason if he did not want us to understand that he wouldn't place it there he wouldn't have said it he wants us to hear that he wants us to understand that so joshua 13 almost almost done 13 26 to 30 jesus told his disciples 
what, told the disciples, remember Jesus was talking about the disciples, the one that was going to betray him there at the Last Supper, and I'm almost done. So Jesus is talking to them at the Last Supper, and he tells them that one of them is going to, 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 uh, uh, to betray him. So all the disciples are there. And verse 26, uh, uh, John 13, 26 says this, Jesus answered, it is the one whom I will give this, this piece of bread uh, when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. But watch this. I, as I preached it before, but it's a little different what God has given me today. Look what, look, what, look what Jesus tells him. What you're about to do, do quickly, Jesus told him. But watch it. Look at verse 28. But no one at the table, no, no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. So Jesus said this, and no, it said, those that were there did not understand why Jesus said this to him. Because in reality, they were looking at Jesus, I mean, Judas' life in the ministry, and they were saying, Judas is cool. Judas has been faithful. Judas has been in the ministry. He was there with Jesus. Judas has been, once again, verse 28, but no one at the table, at the meal, understood why Jesus said this to him. Verse 29, since Judas had charge of the money, some thought that Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Hmm. So Jesus told him, the one I give this bread to, is the one that's going to betray me. He dips it in the bread, gives it to Judas, tell him what you're going to do, do quickly. And once again, the, G, the, the scripture says that they thought that Jesus was giving him an errand to do. See, Judas, Judas was in charge of the money. And in reality, he was the one that paid for everything. So he was faithful in reality in the, in, in the ministry, and he did what Jesus instructed him but Jesus didn't just decide right then and there that Judas was going to betray him. This was already going on. The seeds of corruption had already been going on in the ministry. You see, Ju Judas was loyal to the Lord in certain areas what God had called him to do. He was loyal that way. But he wasn't loyal in the things of God. You see, because he was in charge of the money. He was walking with Jesus, but he was in charge of the money. You see, Judas had the gifting of finances. That's why they put him in charge of it. He was a numbers man. He had the gift of finances. That's why they put him there. But Judas took that gifting that God had given him, or the gifting he had, and he twisted it. And because of the, 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 the disloyalty of the finances, and he twisted it, it separated him from God's presence. So all that time he was doing ministry, he was still moving with Jesus. But all of a sudden, you heard, I've said this many times, the devil didn't, the scripture doesn't say that during that time he was in ministry that the devil was inside of him. He doesn't say that. It doesn't say that the devil came in him while he was doing ministry. It wasn't until after Jesus gave him the bread where the devil, it said the devil came in him. You see, Sometimes we're real careful moving about ministry. Ah, it's okay. No one's going to know. And it's okay. <laughs> and we'll go like that for months or years sometimes until an incident happens. An incident happens. You can be in church in the presence of God, and God says, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of you living like that. And the devil now has a right to jump in you. Yeah. You can be in ministry. The devil says, I've played with him all these years. And he's played with me. So out of nowhere, you can be at your job, and the devil says, ha, 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 boom. So it came from, it goes from oppression to possession, all because of disloyalty. I know it's difficult, but I need to speak what God has called me to speak. So are you faithful to your, first of all, to your family? Are you loyal to your family? Are you loyal to your wife? If you're not, I'm not just, I'm not, just not talking about having an affair. I'm talking about every aspect of, of offering life and respect and honoring her, your children and your grandchildren. Are you loyal to your job, to your employer? 
If you're not loyal to your job, to your employer, you need to repent before the Lord and begin to act right at your job and to your employer. Mm -hmm. To your church, to your pastor, wherever you go to church. Repent before God and begin to be loyal to your pastor. See, right away, people want to come against him just because we didn't like something. That's not cool. That's hard for the pastor. It's hard for us. See, because let me give you an example, and I'll close with this. Man, I'll close with this. Sometimes you go through stuff in your life uh, out of an influence. Let's just say, let's just say a, a heavy influence of maybe 25 or 30 people that are in your life that, you know, that, you, that are real close, that, that, that you influence a lot. And just out of those 25, 30, or, or 40 people, a lot of issues arise, man. I'm dealing with 2,500. Yeah. 2,500, if not more sometimes. And it's difficult. And my body will kick and buck and my mind will kick and buck. So amongst the leadership, I want to hear encouraging words from leadership. I'm like, oh, praise God. I want to hear blessings. I want to feel the blessings of who God is in your life. That blesses us. That blesses the pastors. It blesses the leadership. Not, oh, bro, shut up. Don't get me wrong. We love and we help. But I'm just like you. I'm I'm a man just like you. This body gets tired, you know. This body gets exhausted. My mind, is, so I got, I got to go before the Lord in prayer even more. So pray for me, and as I pray for you, because I pray for you guys every day. Pray for me that God's will will be done, because I do not want to be in a position to not hear from God that I will not bring what God has called me to bring. I never want to be in a position to bring flesh. I want to bring revelations of God. Amen? I'm done. Let's all stand. Thank you.